We're now going to consider boundary layers in flows in which there is a pressure gradient in the direction of the flow. First we will consider an accelerating flow and this would have a high pressure on the left upstream and a low pressure on the right which is downstream. I'm going to ignore the boundary layer on the top surface here and I will just consider the boundary layer on the bottom surface. So I'll draw some axes and plot Vx as a function of y. If there were no pressure gradient then the boundary layer would look like this. Now if we think back to the case of combined couet poisson flow, this situation is a bit like couet flow with a favourable pressure gradient, that is to say, with a pressure gradient pushing the fluid in the same direction as the mean flow. And in that situation we saw the boundary layer velocity profile become steeper at the wall. And we find exactly the same thing happens in this situation. The boundary layer with a pressure gradient looks like this. And we find that at the wall partial dvx by dy is larger than it was when there was no pressure gradient. We also find that the boundary layer is a bit thinner and that is due to conservation of angular momentum within the boundary layer but I won't deal with that here. If instead we have a pressure gradient pushing in the other direction that is in the opposite direction to the mean flow we get a very different type of behavior. The flow is decelerating which means that we have a low pressure upstream on the left and a high pressure downstream, so the force due to the pressure gradient is in the opposite direction to the flow. So let's consider what happens to the boundary layer velocity profile as I increase this adverse pressure gradient. I'll start with the case where the pressure gradient is equal to zero, and here we have the standard Blasius boundary layer velocity profile, and now I shall draw four profiles as the adverse pressure gradient increases. Well, this is very like combined couet poisson flow, in which the pressure gradient pushes the fluid in the opposite direction to the velocity of the top plate. Now, in that case, we had a parabolic profile pointing in the opposite direction to the one I just looked at, and we can estimate what the adverse pressure gradient will do to this boundary layer velocity profile. With a slight adverse pressure gradient, we will start off with an almost parabolic velocity profile in the opposite direction to the case with a favorable pressure gradient, and then we'll end up at the free stream velocity. Note that at this point we have an inflection point. As we increase the adverse pressure gradient further, there'll come a point where the velocity gradient is zero at the wall, and then of course we always have to end up at the free stream velocity. As we increase the adverse pressure gradient further, we'll have a region of reverse flow near the wall, and as we increase it even further, we'll have a strong region of reverse flow around the wall. And I'll draw that again at the bottom. Outside the boundary layer, the flow reaches the free stream velocity V. At the wall, by the no-slip condition, the velocity is zero. But just adjacent to the wall, there is a region of reverse flow, which arises due to the adverse pressure gradient. So in summary, this shows how the free stream pressure gradient affects the behavior of the boundary layer. This behavior was discovered at the beginning of the 20th century by Prantl and was a very significant advance in fluid mechanics, albeit somewhat overshadowed by simultaneous advances in relativity.